Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. On Salvage Hunters. Where on earth did you get that from? Drew deals with a baronet who drives a hard bargain. 100 quid. Uh, I think we need a bit more than that. He meets a fellow enthusiast in Surrey. You've been collecting this since you were a child, haven't you? With your nanny, I remember. Yes, uh, numbers on gates in South Cheam. <laughs> My father was horrified. And he goes for a ride he won't forget. <laughs> oh, God! Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, that's interesting. That's astonishing. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Oh, wow, look at this, T. Trace it bang. Get in. He'll cross land. Whoa, it's all gone down me back. There <laughs> we go. This is fun, Drew. And water. Heads down. In his hunt for treasure. Go on, then. Hit me with the price. There's nothing he won't buy. I mean, it has been deactivated. With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. A salvager, Drew Pritchard, is always on the lookout for good quality stock for his showroom in Conway, North Wales. Finding different quirky pieces is key to a successful business. But as important as the items are the people who sell them. This week I'm pulling out my little black book and I'm going to go and see some contacts I've had in the past and one new one. The whole business is based on your contacts, who you know. And this, for me, has worked out for years and years. It keeps the lifeblood of the business going. Today, Drew and Tia are travelling 260 miles south from Conwy to Taunton, the county town of Somerset. Right, today, T, we are off to see Sir Ben Slade at Mournsall House down here in Somerset. His house is spectacular. I've been down here before and bought stuff from Ben, and he's bought stuff back from me. But Ben is a buyer. He loves to spend money on furniture. The place will be rammed full of stuff. Mournsall House is a 13th century manor house on a 2,000-acre estate. Although it's Sir Ben's home, it's frequently used as a wedding venue and his penchant for buying furniture has caused some serious overcrowding. It's clutter, and you can't get enough people in the rooms. It's rather like a pub. If you've got too many slot machines, there's not enough drinking room, so you've got to get rid of the slot machines, because there's more profit in drink than there is in the slot machines, and that's what we try and do here. We'll see how we get on with him. Ben likes to spend, and he likes to sell it afterwards as well. The stuff that he buys, I always like. There you go, look at that for a tree-lined drive. Wow. Isn't it beautiful? Stunning. Ben. Good to see you. How Welcome. You doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Oh, Come inside. You right. Come on, Molly. Come on. In you go, ball. Their first stop is the Georgian-style dining room. This table's fabulous, too. Look at this. Oh, it's amazing. 16th century, uh, comes from Tuscany. One piece, the whole top. Yeah. Isn't that quite something? How many offers has Drew made you on that one, then? No, I don't think he's got enough to buy that. <laughs> I've got enough, but I'd hold up probably all my money in one item. Mm. I don't know, what would, what would it take to buy this off you, Ben? I don't know, about... Um, I have to look in my book about 40, 60 or something. 40, 40 or 60 or something? Yeah, somewhere <laughs> like that. Well, That's a good what point. would it cost in London, you know? Oh, you... yeah. I'll let you keep saying, wait, is there another one anyway? 35 to 50. Mm. I think it's probably realistic for something like this. It's amazing. Look at that. Yeah. You go as far as 60 quid, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not tempted to hand over £50,000 for one table, it's on to the next room. Ah, uh, the library. 
So I see we're a bit over furnished in here. We are, yeah. It's a bit cluttered. I need to probably get 30 people in here and we're uh, losing good drinking room. And I think I can probably help you out. There's a few bits and bobs I like the look of here. Well, it's Ottoman. This isn't doing anything, is it? Top's come off. <laughs> Don't know, was that hinged at some point? Yeah, it'd be hinged. The Ottoman, a type of footstool, first came to Europe in the late 18th century from Turkey, the heart of the Ottoman Empire. This mid-19th century version needs substantial repair work, but restored, it could be worth about £400. That one's all right. So, OK, Ben, come on, let's, let's kick off. What do you want for this one, then? Hmm. Fairly valuable. Right, um... 100 quid. Uh, I think we need a bit more than that, cos, okay. uh, you know, a lot of people like sitting on it. But it needs a lot of work. Uh, it's got button out there. That one's pulled through. That one's missing. Pleats are coming apart. Hinges have come off. And the leather's coming away all the way around. So... How much more? Well, I reckon it's, it's worth a few quid more than that, you know, cos okay. you could probably sell that in London for... Quite a lot, really. OK. Well, I'll tell you what, get things started. £150, as mm, it Think up a freckle. Again? I'll have a think about that. You have a think about that. I'll, I'll have keep a think going. about that. I'll see how much money you've got. All right. There's another couple of bits over here that I like the look of as well. I'll pull them out, shall I? What about that one? Is this to go? Yeah, yeah, it's got yeah. to go. Everything's got to go. This 19th century leather desk chair is the kind of original English furniture that's come back into fashion. It could fetch up to £950. Price? £750. Pounds. How about... Um, how about £300? Um, well, to replace it, if you were lucky, would be £750, because it's quite a good one. Mm, it is quite a good one. I, I'm not going to... I can't pay £750, because there's no money left in it. I've got to see a profit. I've got, yeah. I've got to see a yeah, profit. Okay, see a yeah. profit. Okay. Um, what would you come up to then? Um, I actually think that's the original leather looking at it. If it's not the original leather, I'd be surprised. It's really good. Tell you what, let's go, let's go 500 quid. Can you squeeze a little bit more? Well, what about the Ottoman? Hmm. If I say um, 700 quid for this and the Ottoman. It's only 200 quid for that. Yeah, but it needs loads of work. Are we anywhere near? Drew and T are in Somerset, making a return visit to Sir Ben Slade at his 13th century manor house. There's plenty of good quality antique furniture to attract Drew, but Sir Ben is holding firm on prices. 100 quid. Uh, I think we need a bit more than that. So far, Drew hasn't convinced him to make a sale. If I say, um, 700 quid for this and the Ottoman, are we anywhere near? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll go. have a think about that. OK. It's not easy doing the first deal with Ben. I forgot. He just wants to make sure that he's getting the best deal. Okay. Um, if we do 750 on the pair, yeah, all right. Yeah, deal. Right. Fantastic. We've got some money changed hands at yeah. last. Ben's no fool, so it's been, I've had my work cut out trying to buy from him. Um, but a good start. We've managed to buy a couple of pieces that I couldn't buy anywhere else. Really pleased. What about the Club Fender? Mm, Is that for sale? Uh, well, you had one off me last time. Yes. Um, that one is more valuable. Yes. And I can't replace it, because I've been trying to replace it ever since. Oh, right, because it doesn't fit there, does it? It's not no, big enough. it doesn't fit, yeah. Um, I need, to, I need a decent one, exactly the same size to fit in there, so that uh, it's just not wide enough. What about if I gave you £950 for it? Um, I can't replace it. You could probably get one made for that, I would say. Because it doesn't fit, and mm. then it's wobbly. So, yeah. obviously, I would sell it, but I have to replace it. OK. So what are we going to do about that one? Not for sale? Well, find me another one. I'll see what I can do, but... That offer stands on that one. OK. OK. Come on, boys. 
Next, it's upstairs to investigate some of the 13 bedrooms reserved for wedding guests and visitors. See, wait till you see this room. Look at this. <laughs> oh, hey? That's a proper room. Look at that. This is where the brides stay, is it? Yeah, we can get... It's eight and a half foot wide, this bed. It's a great bed. And also, and we can get seven people in the bed. Hey, that's a night out, isn't it? We is. charge seven times as much. Oh, glad to go. Well done, well done. Um, again, you know, there's a lot of furniture in here. Yeah, there's too much, really. Too much it? furniture again yeah. in here. I th this one here. What about that one? Oh, that one? No, yeah. that, that's a, a proper yeah. antique. Yeah. Lovely seat. But it's, um, new. The second I pick it up, straight away I thought, oh, no, it's wrong. It's quite a good copy, but it's a copy. The sort of nuts and bolts of it are... It's rubbish, to be honest. It was rather unfortunate. He did look underneath it. Had I thought that he might do that, I think I would have had a look under there with my screwdriver and sorted it out beforehand. The people who get married and come in here must be over the moon. Well, they get up to all sorts of antics, and uh, sometimes they have to ring the bell. We have a bell. You pull a rope here, and they get into trouble. Does it uh, work? And, uh, yeah, and they... And they ring that, and we have to come and untie them and, get them, <laughs> you know, whatever. Well, only on request. That's really good. Do you charge extra for that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, let's go on. An impressive room in all sorts of ways, but with nothing to buy, it's on to the next. Come on, dogs. So what's this? Where, who stays in here, Ben? Um, usually the mother-in-law or something like that, you know. Uh, it's very handy cos you can shoot squirrels out of three different windows. It's always handy that. during a wedding, I find. All right. It's a sort of day bed there. That's quite nice, I think. That's rather nice, Ben. Good feet. It is. That's got great cracking feet, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Do you need a day bed for the office, do you, Drew? Hey, for me, for just yeah. lying about on. It looks amazing, doesn't it? The quality of the of the legs is, is, is the quality of the feet is amazing, but the frame's not so good, not so good, unfortunately. I love the uh, I love the wear to it. Hmm. So what was what's that going to cost then, Ben? Well, fair amount. It's very handy because that's where they put their suitcases. Yeah. So that's a, is that a no go? Well, too handy. You unless you come up with some serious money. Death I don't price. Know. OK. The second I sort of looked at Ben, I could see he's not going to let that go. It's too good for business, that piece. What on, where on earth did you get that from? Did somebody make this for you? No, it's, it's very old, actually. It is genuine. Have a look at it. It was a children's bike. It's pre-1900. I love it. Some of the elements of it are really well engineered, like the chain ring and, and the, uh, the cranks and the pedals are all cast into as one section and beautifully made. This 19th century wooden bicycle was originally made as a child's toy. It's a one-off and in excellent condition. It could sell for almost £500. I'd like to pay you... 225 can't you squeeze it up a bit? Because I think you'll get more than that in London. I don't London. think so. In I London, you would. I think it's had a couple of alterations over the years. These screws here, the nuts and bolts, sorry, here, which there's no other nut and bolt on the whole bike that looks like that. They're all this type. Well... So that, like, this is later. So I think maybe this has been an addition. Because this is... This doesn't you know, sort of feel right. Health and safety made them put it in, I suppose, at a later date. Health and safety. <laughs> it's, it's signed to Bradley Wiggins there. Oh, is it? Well. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a reasonable. Team word. GB. <laughs> um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stick on 225 for that. It gives sure. me a margin. Yeah, because I, I may have to sell it at 300 quid. Mm. If it doesn't go in three months' time, it's mm. 300 quid or less, and it's mm. got to go. I'll, I, I don't want stuff hanging around. Mm. I really, really don't want stuff hanging around, but that I like. What do you think? You can't squeeze any more, 225. 225, 250? All yep. in? That's it, isn't it? Yep. That's okay. fair. Right. Cheers, Ben. It's perfect. Don't have to do anything. A little bit of stock. Turn of the century, maybe a little bit earlier. Very unusual. I really like it. Are you a proper wheeler dealer now? <laughs> yes. With the house done and dusted, it's off to the outside shed. This 
this is nice, Ben. Yeah. Where did this one come from? I've been lying up at uh, Durling's, I think. We open the door, and clear as day, there is a fantastic table right in front of me. An absolute belter. This has got everything. It's got Cotswold Country House, Gloucestershire Country House, London Townhouse. It's got, you know, cool Dorset Farmhouse written all over it. It's cool as hell. Everybody wants one, and I'm looking right at one. Can't believe my eyes. The tabletop is made from three planks of 18th century oak. The legs and frame need repairing, but tables like this are hard to find. Restored, it's worth about £4,000. Love it. What's it going to cost me? Mm. I would say... <sighs> to replace that, because that's good on top, isn't it? I suppose it's a couple of grand or something, isn't it? I'll go 1100. You have to go a bit more than that because actually, you know that that is that's very marketable. It's had it's had quite a lot of work done to it. The stretcher here has been reduced so you can get people's legs yeah, underneath. You've got to get your knees underneath. It's got to be practical. The look. What? Look. Well, it's old. Well, I know it's old, but it's had a metal rod in there to sort of bring that back. Now I've got to. I can keep that, but I've got to do some work to it. So that's, and this side has all been stripped back and sanded very, very badly. Well, you and just... And sort of ruined, really. Resand it again. I'll have to, that's exactly, it'll have to be, it'll have to be. It'll be all right. So, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a price, one price. £1,250. Right. Come on, bit, it's bit, got to be, more. that's got, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. That's fair. Mm. That's fair. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see how much money we need at the end of the day. With the deal up in the air, Drew goes hunting for something else he could include with the price of the table. And T might have found just the thing. This is lovely. This is really nice. Yeah, it's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, I really like that. That's lovely. It's an early 19th century boot scraper. This one is larger than most and could sell for around 500 pounds. If I was to say, I'll give you 1500 for the pair. That one's worth about two grand. Really but squeezing my profit, you I'm see. Not, no, no. You are squeezing my profit very, very hard there. Let's knock it on the head. 1900 quid. For these two? Yeah. <sighs> Why don't you go to 2000 and then you're getting that one for free, so it's all in at two. Deal. So Sir Ben gets the 2000 pounds he wanted for the table but Drew gets the boot scraper included in the price. Paid a bit much, but still, it's a hell of a good table. Once Alex has been through that thing, it'll look a million dollars. And there's not many that good on the market at any one time in the UK. Very happy. The marathon negotiations done, a quick breather is in order. This tea you're gonna love. But it's not drinks on offer today. In Ben's bar, you can go in there and you can pick all these guns up and mess around with them. Brilliant, it was like being 10. T, I think we need to go and run around outside and play war. I think this is the one we need. Oh, oh yes. This is the classic. Classic AK-47. If you, if, well, I mean, we have regular shooting on this stage. If you fancy a bit of shooting, we have keepers and things out here. We're now, gonna get some real guns. Yeah, no problem. Oh, yes, please. One thing I love doing, and it's one of the things I really love doing, is clay pigeon shooting. I really, really like it. And any chance I get, I do it. And I've done it an awful lot. Well. Chase it, bang. Oh, absolutely. I better inches. get it on the next one. Absolutely. So you will. I better get it on the next one. <laughs> Paul! Just over the top. Now we've got to find a halfway house now. Not that you'd know I'd done it an awful lot today. Uh, appalling. My shooting today was dreadful. Chase it, bang. Okay, still too slow. I've still got to get you to speed it up a bit. <laughs> I've only done this about 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> That's just mournful. My mates will be laughing at me. It's rubbish. OK, Ashley, pull! Uh, T never fired a shotgun in his life. Chase it, bang. Three. Perfect. Third shot, dead on. Blast it to bits. Very good. Pull! Get in. Yes. Today was a good day. I spent, what, £3,000, I think, dead on, but I've got four fantastic English country house items with perfect provenance in untouched original condition. What I'm always looking for. Couldn't be better. We bought some brilliant stuff. We shot a load of shotguns. 
top day. Very good. Drew uh, can come back at any time, as long as he brings some money with him, and he gets serious about the prices, be very glad to see him. The pieces we got were great, uh, but I did pay up for them. You know, I didn't get him for nothing. He was very keen today, wasn't he? He was sharp with his uh, battery. He was sharp on his prices today, but he wasn't wrong. Did you fancy going shooting again? Oh, yeah. I'd go every day. I, to be honest with you, I'm a bit worried about shooting with you because I have a funny feeling you're going to shoot me at some point around. Well, that's going to happen sooner or later. <laughs> so part of my everyday task now is to go play pigeon shoot. Ideally, yeah. Okay. Are you right? Drew and T have just completed a successful trip to Mournsell House in Somerset. Cheers, Ben. See ya. But before heading home, they're going to call in at an old contact of Drew's in Cranley, Surrey. You are going to meet one of my heroes. Really? Yes, you are. A guy called Charles Brooking. Charles runs the Brooking Collection, and it is the best resource, stroke museum, for architectural fittings, window furniture, door furniture, fireplaces, architectural elements and carvings in Britain. From the outside, this looks like any ordinary house in a suburban street. But behind the facade, it's anything but ordinary. The Brooking Collection is the only one of its kind in the UK, preserving over 500 years of British building details. And I actually formally started the museum idea when I was 13, and I rescued all these items from demolition sites, buildings being altered. And it is, in fact, um, now a major teaching collection. People can come and see, say, a Georgian window of 1780 or a 1930s Crittle window if they're restoring or want to learn about the period. The collection has been a labour of love for Charles and is a charity. Today, he's hoping to raise some much-needed funds. I've dug out some interesting bits for Drew, really quirky bits that are not part of the collection. I've been trying to get Drew down here for years. This is amazing to actually get him down here after nearly 10 years. It's super. There we go. Oh, this here it is that on the left. That one, that one, that one. Charles, Hello. at last, good how are you doing? This is years, hasn't it? This is Hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah. Uh, this I've, is just my teaching collection. This is it. You'll love this. Amazing. We're going to learn. You're going to learn a lot. Brilliant. Learn a lot. Can we have a look around, Charles? Yes. After you. Thank you. This is in. Look at this. Wow. Is this like the history of windows here? I've taken the story of the window roughly from around about 15. Hundred right the way through. You've been collecting this since you were a child, haven't you? With your nanny, I remember yes, you telling me. Yes, numbers on gates in South Cheam. <laughs> My father was horrified at cocktail parties. <laughs> What's your son interested in? Numbers on gates. I'm trying to get interested in football and cricket. <laughs> to see what Charles has done here today, properly in the flesh, it's better than I thought it was. It's quite incredible the store of knowledge he's had in this one single room. And if it wasn't for Charles, there wouldn't be any of these. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to imagine. All this is gone. Yeah. All this is in a skip. These salvaged pieces of British history are here for visitors to view and to learn from. That's why Drew wants to contribute to the collection. I've brought you something. Really? And I don't know if they're going to be of interest to you. I'll be able to tell within the first 10 seconds whether these are of interest to you. If you have seen them before, I'd like to know where. OK. Right, they're very boring, aren't they? I have seen them before, many times, asylums. Yes. Phosphor bronze? Phosphor bronze. What age? 20s, 30s. I bet you've never seen those, though, have you? Good gracious, no. No. Where are they from? The Rolls-Royce factory? That's what I think, but I don't know. I think they are. Well, that, that's the... There you go. That's amazing. I mean, I've seen these many times, but never with this sort really of... Really common handle, one oh, of yes. my favourites. But there you go. What a marvellous gift. Well, when I first saw them, I thought, oh, dear been there, done this, a pair of ordinary asylum knobs or office knobs. And then I saw the monogram, I thought, by Jove, they're rolls. They really are important. So I was over at the moon. I'll show you the Crittle window collection or the steel window collection. Yeah. Now, people think I'm completely nutty doing this, but there's no other record of the factory-made window 
that evolved from the 1880s onwards and continued right up to the 1970s in existence. And I preserved here, this is only a tiny bit of it, the history of the factory-made window. And I'm still thought of as a nutcase preserving them. But there's got to be a record of this form of window type because they're going so quickly. Everyone's ripping them out. They are drafted, they do rust. But they, you know, if they're well maintained and they can be double glazed internally, they should be kept. I mean, it preserves the character of the house. And this is what I'm preaching. The fenestration of a building. I know. People don't understand that the, the windows were designed with the building. And as soon as you take the windows out, you've lost the whole look of the building. The eyes of the building. And exactly. I have a terrible battle with people. And they, when I go on site, and they say, what do they want them bleeding old cripples for, mate? Bit odd, isn't it? I said, I run a muse <laughs> museum of them. Keep <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> well, it's, that's the important bit now, that this place is open to the public isn't it? It's a resource now for people to come and use, and I think that's the really important thing that you've done. Anyway, let's, see, let's have a look at some more, Charles. Right, well, let me show you these bits I've got, which you might be interested in. Better cover it up, because it rained last night. We dug these out yesterday. You've got underneath some globes by Erno Goldfinger from um, a building in Bern. Erno Goldfinger? Yes. What's that the architect. Is that Pla glass? No, they're plastic. No, they're plastic. 1968 to 72 from Carradale House. They're and pretty they're, fabulous, aren't they? They're different, aren't they? Yeah. It's a great name by the designer yeah. as well. These lights hung for four decades in an austere block of flats in the East End of London. The architect, Erno Goldfinger, was a key member of the British modernist movement. With some rewiring, these lights could sell for about £250. When I first, first saw them, I thought, God, if they're glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure not, about those. Plastic lighting is something I hardly ever buy, but the association with the architect and that building, and I quite like them. I would say probably got some interest in these. I just need to get my head around pricing them. Right. In my, in my mind now. While Drew has a think about the lights, Charles steers him inside to the library. Oh, oh right. th this is it, the hub, is it? Nerve centre. So, basically, it's everything on this table. Ah, you want to get rid of this more stuff here for sale as well? Yes. Oh, okay. I quite like the sign underneath The there. sign, yes. Both sides on that one. It's just a flat bread engraving. This is. is that what it's called? It's My mother had it done for a shop yeah. in, in Willow Hall Street. Yeah, and then, yeah, you're correct. What's that? So, HM Customs and Excise. I love that. That's lovely. I thought you'd like that. I like that. It's a shame you can't show both sides, isn't it? This 1920s engraved brass sign hung outside the tax office at Somerset House in London. It could sell for up to £200. How much would you want for this one, Charles? I mean, really, this is more, you know, you're the one who's the expert. All right. It's very commercial. Well, what would I pay for that? What would I pay? If that was at an antique fair and I was buying it, I would probably pay £100 for it. I couldn't see myself paying much more. OK, well, look, I mean, I you're, that's, you know, fair. that's fair. The sign's got a lot going for it. It's pretty cool, and it's from a, a really well-known house, Somerset House in London. Next, it's up to the loft. Right, then, so what have we got in here, Charles? The desk, these. These may be... There's a sort of harlequin set, isn't it? Yes, really? mixture. Bits that just 20s, all... 30s, probably. Yeah. In the mid-20th century, these oak boxes held index cards, making them an essential means of record-keeping in offices they could sell as a collection for more than £500. Let's... So, if we said... Um, 120 for all these bits... That'd be super. Is that all right? Yeah. When I photograph these from my website, I can just pile them all up and sell it as a collection. You know, they look good together and they'll retail well. There's just one item left to negotiate. The two lights outside that you showed me. I do like those. The more I've been thinking about them, they've just got such a good look anyway. Being plastic, I think I'd probably go to sort of 80 quid for the pair. Um, it's not a lot, but they are plastic, and that is going to cause me a bit of a problem. Yes, I mean, you've got... Um, they're by an important designer, so it's quite interesting, but that's fine, yes. Yeah. OK. If you go down to it, I'll start yeah. passing you stuff. How's that? I've spent more than I normally would on those items, but it's for a good cause, and it's for a cause I strongly believe in. It's a basic bit of our past that somebody needed to save. OK. 
Oh, it's been marvellous having Drew down after all this time. So pleased he's come down after 10, 12 years of promising. <laughs> So we've seen lots of lovely things, met a really nice fella, and we bought some stuff. Yeah, and you've seen the collection, and I've seen the collection for the first time in the flesh. It's quite an amazing collection, to be fair to him. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And I think he should be knighted for what he's done. In a couple of hundred years' time, they'll look back and go, thank God yeah. he saved all this stuff. Having doled out their own New Year's honours, it's back to Conway. Drew has much to reveal to Rebecca and the team. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? We've been back to a friend of ours. Do you remember Sir Ben? Oh, yeah. Ben Slades. We went there again. He called us in. Look at that. Bought himself okay. a new BMX. <laughs> How lovely is that? That's so the, cute. The seat. I know. Gorgeous thing. Drew's hoping to grow into it. <laughs> <laughs> One day. His legs won't reach the pedals. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? Sorry. So this is a 19th century red leather Ottoman button seat. Need some repair. Gav, okay. if you could just sort some better hinges. The hinges are rubbish on it. Uh, and just a general... Isn't that lovely? Mm. Country house. Fantastic course, country house a, piece. Yeah. How good's that? <sighs> so it's uh, English. Oh. 18th century. Possibly earlier. Oak dining table. Well, it's a kitchen prep table, probably, in the day, but the it would day. have been used for everything. That's just a gem. Isn't it? Isn't it? Wonderful. Some idiot has also taken a sander to it. Mm. So that's going to have to go to Alex. So the table goes in for repairs. And next out of the van, it's the haul from Charles Brooking. Here we go, Ollie. Slightly unusual one of these. And these came from a designer who I should know about, but I didn't. And he was called... Is it Arne Goldfinger? Er Erno Goldfinger? Don't know. They look like a, like a big holophane, don't they? Yeah. But they're, they're plastic. But they came from a fantastic building as well, and he's a very, very well-respected and well-known 20th century designer. And we're going to do some research on those. I actually haven't heard of the designer either. Um, unusual. Strange, strange. But looking forward to finding out a bit more. Yes. Yep. So they've made that one, I think. Right, you hated them. I do. <laughs> well, no, I love the HM Custom Dex. They do such a good job, and they're all so pleasant and lovely. Um, just flatten that corner there, Gav. Quick wipe for sale. I thought we could use it as a doormat to wipe our feet and all that. <laughs> After such a large haul from Drew's trip, the team goes straight to work. Ollie, the electrical engineer, gets started on the globe lights. So we'll just open this up and make sure there's no burning in burning of the control gear. He inspects all the internal components, looking for broken or burnt out parts. So that all looks in reasonable neck. After a quick polish, the pieces are put back in place. Switch that on now. There you go. That's hung up in a in a loft of a bar or somewhere. Look quite nice. Now they're ready for Alary to photograph. The oak table has been handed over to Alex, the French polisher, who starts repairing the frame. We just need to pop some new pegs in to hold all this cracked oak together, stop the movement and get it tightened up before we fix the top back on. He drills the holes from the inside to hide the repairs and applies expanding glue to the pegs and the holes. And as the glue starts to foam up and expand, we hope to see it coming out from all areas of the table. Now we're going to take the clamps off and just see if the, the legs set solid. Wobble. Yeah, that's bomb proof now. So that couldn't have gone better, really. So we'll just take the glue off, clean it up a bit, and then it's ready to go. There we go. So this is the drawer that Drew's bought with the table. 
Doesn't quite look 17th century. But we'll check it fits, and if it's the right fit, then we can make a copy of it, make it look nice and early. So, yeah, that's a good fit and draw. So now we're just going to copy it to those dimensions, but we'll do it in the keeping of the table. Drew and T are back on the road for their next expedition, and this time they're meeting a new contact. We're off to see a guy called David Dent, who runs uh, uh, Dent and Sons, and they do skip hire. They used to do demolition, um, and because of the access to stuff that they've had over the years, they're now going to go into the architectural salvage business. They're travelling from Conway, Wales, to Wormley, a commuter village north of London. Um, the best thing is, he's given us a heads up and says, come on in and have a look, and nobody's been in there. David and his brothers have decided to sell the salvaged items they uncover in their skips. They're just getting started, and Drew is their first customer. He's actually quite privileged in as much as he's going to get a chance to have a look at our better quality items before they go on general sale to anyone else. If nobody's been through the place, we could get very lucky here today. Fingers crossed. Because um, the big yard is in a good area, it'll have stuff coming in every day, but I'm looking for the little diamonds in the rough. Yeah. yeah. Do you think this might be the place? Yes, I like the look of it already. This on, man. Hello. Hi, Drew. David, how are you doing? Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, T. Hi, T. Nice to meet you. Um, well, look, thanks for calling us. Very grateful. Um, I believe you've got the salvage yard sort of set up, but not open yet. No, we've uh, we've been accumulating stuff for quite some time. All right, yeah. great. Well, look, I'd love to see what you've got okay. going so far. A new salvage yard like this is a potential treasure trove and an opportunity to build a contact that will continue for years to come. I can see a couple of bits already that are of interest to me. Um, there's so much stuff around here, David, that, that's, uh, that I like the look of. Is that wood? Is it? No. Um, these, spotted these straight away. You've got lots of these. How many, do you know how many you've got of these? Uh, to be honest, I don't. Well, quite, quite a lot of them. around. Uh, I do like them. They're very simple, but I quite like them. What sort of price are those, then? They're only just coming into sort of the sort of thing that I'll buy now, because mm -hmm. they were sort of even even me three or four years ago wasn't buying stuff like this, and now it's very no very I mean, trendy at the moment. Some well, of it. but it needs a lot of work. These everyday beach chairs were cheap and plentiful in the 1930s. They're hard to find in good condition, so their value has climbed. Once polished, they could sell for around 35 pounds each. Price-wise. Ten pound each. Ten pound each. All right. Yeah, for tenner, we'll take them all at a tenner, and we can um, just restore all this up and get it to match. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to pay about twelve to fifteen pounds each. Um, ask Dave. He comes out with a tenner. He's left a load of profit in it for me. First deal out the way and a bargain for me, to be honest. Okay, fine. We'll dig through those later. Through I, I, those, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to right. stop. There's too much to see. Usually, the best shed, as everybody's got one, is reserved till last. Um, this time, we go straight in. Instantly, I start spotting items straight away, and there's an awful lot for me. I think you should buy me that for never ever paying me. Yeah. Beer will change the world. I don't know how, but it will. will. Unfortunately, T, there's no beer behind oh. me. Oh. Yeah, I'm going home. Mm. Yeah, I'm going home. Yeah, I'm going home. Yeah. Like these. How many have you got? Have you just got the three? Just the three. Oh, that's a shame. Um... Oh, it's been overpainted. They were green underneath mm, this yes. originally. <laughs> I'm going to have to strip all that off. These workshop chairs were made in the 1940s by an English company called Evertort, manufacturers of quality office furnishings to this day. These are a bit small and need a good polish, but they could fetch about £250 each. I appreciate there's a bit of work in them, but yeah. I, I know they are quite sought after. Um, I'd want for the three...
Drew and T are at a brand new salvage yard in Hertfordshire. They're Dent and Sons' first customers. You can see a couple of bits already that are of interest to me. Drew wants to buy these workshop chairs. Like these. But can he and owner David Dent agree on a price? Um, I'd want for the three... One twenty for the three. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, there you go. Again, no, I have those. Thank you. It's that thing I'm always looking for. So it's a beautiful, basic piece of design which is done really well, and these have got a real edge to them, and I really like them. The day is turning out to be a huge success and all thanks to this one shed. Ah, what about those? Uh, they're from... Uh, Alloy. Theatre... Uh, cinema, not theatre, cinema frontage, where they used to have the... Oh, they say the movie the name. Front, right. yes, I done. wondered why they had those on. I've never yeah, seen those they, before. They'd slot in and then they could be easily changed. Obviously, the film changed. Films changed every week. In the 1950s, these alloy letters would have been prominently displayed to attract the cinema goers. Today, they're popular as quirky design pieces. With such a large quantity on hand, they could be a very good buy. Each letter is worth about £25. What would you want for the pile? I don't want to get into counting them, really. No. Give us a ballpark figure. You got a D over there. 150 quid. 150 quid for the lot. Yeah. Probably getting on towards 70, two, two, three pound a letter. Okay. 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 <laughs> Thanks, no, we'll have those. <laughs> Made me giggle anyway, too. These are not going to be very expensive items each to buy, but their sheer volume will make these a very profitable thing for us, and everybody wants their name up in lights. You know, they do. They, those little letters, they always sell. David is turning out to be a great new contact, and Drew is not done yet. There is so much stuff in here. Look, Willow. Nice distressed mirror. That distress is sending flares out. <laughs> Distressed is good. Ideally, you want them not like that square. You want them sort of landscape. Yeah. Uh, it's, that's what everybody wants. They just lean them in the corner of a room and they, it sort of looks really pretty. The mirror is late 19th century. It's been left outside so long that the frame is beyond repair. It will be expensive to reframe. But the distressed glass plate is appealing and the final price could be up to £850. <laughs> This type of mirror, it's not a really, really old one. I'll happily pay £40 for it, because it's just the mirror that I want. I don't really want the rest of it. Um, yeah. Well, seeing as I've had it for a while and I've not been able to move it on, I'll yeah. take your £40. 40 quid. So. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll have that one. It looks nuts. I'm buying a mirror you can't really see your face in. To me, it's much more desirable from one that's perfect. It's getting that middle ground. The shed thoroughly investigated. David has one last thing he wants to show Drew. Uh, these are a couple of vehicles that my brothers have been restoring. Hello there. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah. Right. Fine, thanks. Wonderful. Oh, it's a flathead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Six-cylinder flathead. So what's this? What's this? A GMC? What's this? A Dodge. A Dodge. Dodge one. Yeah. How old is it? Uh, Dodge weapons carrier. This is. It's 1943. This one. Wow. Drew can't resist going for a quick spin. Oh, it's not as heavy as you think. It's not bad once you get rolling. No, it's all right. I've never driven a, a big Yank vehicle like this. I've had a few CJ Jeeps. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, big four-litre left-hand drive manual ones. I've had yeah. a lot of those. The, um... oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Soaked. Ah, ah, it's all gone 
How is that? Um, had an unexpected ending. Are you, are you buying it? No, look. Soaked. <laughs> I'm <laughs> soaked. <laughs> I'm completely soaked. Look. <laughs> hey, all the water was trapped on the roof and it all poured down the back and become drenched. Look. I think yeah, we better get loaded up and get changed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We got a big wet look, roof. Look. I don't really I've want to look. Got a wet bum. Don't want to look at your bum. Serves you right for having fun. Oh. Overall, a great day. I'm very lucky to get in here first, because if another dealer had been in here, he'd have bought all the stuff I bought as well. We've managed to stumble across an absolute little gold mine of things for me. All things I love and that I'm looking for every day. And they're all in a 20 by 20 shed. Perfect. Right, good luck with it. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you, Drew. All See, the you best. Again. See, See you again. Take care. Nice to meet you. Bye. Wow, what a haul. That's not bad, was it? Yeah, it was not bad at all. I think we got a lot of quantity and quality there all in one hit. Yeah. We can get all that lot back and into the shop straight away. Yeah. There's not a massive amount of work. So, all in all, a good day. A very good day. Very happy. After the long drive back to Conway, Drew is eager to show off his new finds. Hello. Hello, hello. Ta -da. Ta -da. Cool. Aren't they cool? Little. You like these, Ollie? You don't have to put a plug on it. Nice. I love them. <laughs> Electric chair. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Aren't they good? Um, let's get There's loads more. We've got a really good day, actually. These, Gav. They are piles of... Can you guess what they're from? The alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Cinema. You'd put all the, the names of the films or whatever. That's fantastic. Mm. Colours, gorgeous. They're so peely paint. Um, great little find. Oh, fab. Like Isn't, that Isn't that lovely? Oh, oh hair's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> And mine. <laughs> <laughs> the distress mirror um, is really distressed, and that's what Drew absolutely loves. It's a great size, a really good size, and we're low on stock on mirrors at the moment. Later, the Evertort chairs are given a quick polish by Gavin. I'm just going to clean it up and then wax it, and wax the seat. The cinema letters are ready to be photographed and Drew gets a first look at the table he worked so hard to buy from Sir Ben. It's now fully restored. Beautiful. Perfect. Unfortunately, perfection costs quite a lot of money, and it was an awful lot of money to have this put right. New drawer from old timber, old handle. Resecured all the legs, woodworm treated, leveled. Strengthened underneath and repolished. This table is now going to retail for the high three thousands, early four thousand um, pounds. It's a rare beast. I'm extremely happy with it because if I went to auction to buy this, I'd probably have to pay close to four thousand for it. But the best thing about this is it's fresh to the market. It's not been round the trade. It's fresh. That's good. Alex has done a superb job, but it's absolutely bang on now. Perfect.